Welcome back. We continue now with our rare exclusive interview with Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas. In part two of our conversation, we discuss the recent controversies over statues and monuments in America, his love of the Constitution, and that small Justice Thomas exhibit finally added to the National African American Museum. There's a controversy because the Smithsonian Museum, African American Museum, for its first year, after it opened its doors, it had basically no reference to you yeah. except a reference to the confirmation battle. Um, oh, did you think anything of that? or Not really. I mean, people who cared about me did, you know, obviously, but no, not really. I mean, I, you know, I grew up at a time when I was exposed to just wonderful range of ideas in a segregated library, in a black library, the Carnegie Library in Savannah. I mean, you might read uh, George Schuyler in the Pittsburgh Courier, or yeah, you might read uh, a book by, you know, George, uh, Ralph Ellison or uh, Baldwin, or you might uh, read one by uh, Richard Wright. So you, you, you might read something about Booker T. Washington, but then W.B. Du Bois. So you had this range of ideas. And I think we're getting quite comfortable in our society uh, limiting ideas and exposure to ideas. And maybe that's a symptom of it. I don't know. But I don't think it's good for the next generation and the people who will be learning. I mean, I think I learned a tremendous amount in the Carnegie Library simply from being exposed to a range of ideas. I mean, why would a little kid in Savannah, Georgia, be reading Ayn Rand? Um, why? I mean, somebody exposed me to it. Somebody made the books available. Someone said it's okay for you to read that, and you should read it and learn from it. Were any statues torn down during your time as a young boy in the South? Did you see any big historical monuments moved ever or taken no. down? Well, I didn't see that much iconoclasm. I think there was, there was all kinds of, there were all sorts of other problems. Other problems with the... But, um, you know, I, I think we, in, when I grew up and where I grew up in Savannah, the people I grew up with were a different people. I mean, How so? people like, well, you, when you think of people like my grandparents, these were people who had been through quite a bit and had a calmness and a contentment about life, and they understood uh, putting things in context, what was important, priorities, what battles are you going to fight today, what decisions you're going to make, what decisions you're going to make today will result in you being able to eat. Uh, those sorts of things, and long term, that these two boys they were raising will be educated, and that they will have good manners and go to school and be polite to the neighbors, et cetera. I think that today we seem to think that everything has to be one size fits all, and people can't have opinions that make us uncomfortable or ideas that make us uncomfortable or that we don't agree with. Uh, they would not tolerate that. So, and in, in your grandparents went through real segregation. They went through. Real racism, real racial hardship. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a plaque in your office mm -hmm. with a quote on it that's attributed to your grandfather. Tell mm -hmm. us about that. Well, actually, my grandfather's favorite saying was, I mean, there were lots of opportunities in that environment to, as you could imagine, to want to say that you couldn't do certain things. And my grandfather, who was raised in part by his grandmother, who was a freed slave, and raised by his, uh, an uncle, and his mother died when he was a little, a young boy. So he was raised by his grandmother and his uncle later on. Well, when you would say to him you couldn't do something, he, his response was always the same. Old man can't is dead. I helped bury him. Old man can't is dead. I helped bury him. Yeah. yeah. And his, that was his view. He would say that to you when he got you up at four in the morning to go on the farm. Uh, and, uh, and you said, I can't do this or do that. Old man can't is dead. That is, I wish I knew your grandfather. Well, you, yeah, I wish you, a lot of people knew him and I wish he was still here so I could thank him. The um, fact that you raised a son mm -hmm. and a nephew, what did you learn from that? 
You know, I think you're raising kids. It is a humbling process. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it gets increasingly humbling as they get older. And the, I think any, any parent who's raised kids will understand, will tell you it's humbling. Are you shocked after all these years, after the 60s, you were in college? When did you graduate? 70, 71. Well, 71. Mm -hmm. Those are tumultuous times mm -hmm. at Yale, um, at Yale, at Yale, mm -hmm. Yale Law School. Uh, are you surprised at how things are still so rancorous in the United States today about foundational issues? Yeah. Not, not about hot, but just foundational yeah. issues, the anthem and so forth. No, I'm not surprised. <laughs> I mean, what, what binds us? What do we all have in common anymore? In the, I think we have to think about that. I think this is uh, when I was a kid, even as we had laws that held us apart, there were things that we held dear and that we all had in common. And I think we have to, we always talk about the pluribus unum. What's our unum now? We have the pluribus, what's the unum? And I think it's a great country. Uh, I think we, for whatever reasons, have made it our, dis some people have decided that the Constitution isn't worth defending, that the history isn't worth defending, that the culture and the principles aren't worth defending, then, you know, certainly if you're in my position, they have to be worth defending. So that's what keeps you going. That's what energizes you. That's what makes it the endeavor, all of the criticism, the, the other things. That's what makes it all acceptable. Because what you're doing is so important and so critical to the things that matter. So I don't know what it is that we have, we can say instinctively, we have as a country in common. It's great to see you. Thank you for making some time for us today. And thank you, and thank you, for, and good luck in, uh, with your new uh, show. Thank you so much, Justice. It's, it's, it's easier than clerking for you. <laughs> Just teasing.